everybody, this is the Board Game Realm. We're bringing you our continuing series of Arkham Horror 3rd Edition by Fantasy Flight Games. We are continuing our series with a Veil of Twilight scenario. Hadn't done too hot in the previous two, but I'm hoping to redeem myself. I don't even know why I said that. I mean, it's Arkham Horror. What are my chances? Uh, hope I said redeem myself in this scenario. Uh, I am going to make one small rules modification. Not really a rules modification. That's not fair. Um, in the previous series, I've always said I play with the starting, you know, three characters. And if any of them die, then I consider to fail. Um, so after attempting two others and failing them both, I'm going to give myself a chance based on the rules. Because technically the rules you just add another investigator and continue to play until you completely fail the scenario based on the scenario conditions. So we're going to try that and hope I can actually make it through and don't wreck the world again. So let's go to the table. Let's see what we can do, shall we? All right, so we're here at the table. I've got everything already set up. Uh, I am trying something a little different. Uh, as you can see in the top, top right corner, uh, you'll see me now. Other than that, the setup's the same. Uh, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm going to try that. And I'm also going to try uh, sitting down while I'm doing these because sometimes these marathon sessions take forever and standing up is great, but it's, uh, yeah, we're just going to see how it goes. Tell me if you like this format. If it sucks, I'll go back to the other one. If you're cool with it, hey, I'll keep, uh, I'll definitely do it as much as I can, uh, especially with the layouts. Fortunately, the layout is uh, pretty good for this one. So as I said, this is called Vela Twilight. Here is the scenario. So what does the scenario say? Uh, the story so far. In the cold void between worlds, something lurks. Beyond the veil, it whispers, reaching out for those with the power to free it from its prison. Those who fall into its thrall gain great power at a terrible price. And each day, its freedom draws nearer. So this is called the Veil of Twilight. Um, and I've already done the board setup. We have our five locations uh, over here, which you can't see, is my card display. Uh, I've got all the decks pre-done with the encounters created. Uh, shuffling in the uh, encounter deck, you can see down here we actually have two clues, so that, that's how that happened. Uh, we spread it, uh, spread it, is that a word? Sure, why not? We spread Doom once to the train station, which is up here, and the train station actually started with one based on the scenario card. We have our... Mythos, our bag of boo ready, because um, there's nothing that ever comes good out of that. We have another clue up here. Um, the scenario had us put a void touched and a hulking thrall in these locations, and a white marker in this location. So, um, let's see, I think that was pretty much it. Uh, we are using the fractured reality. Um, oops. See, Fractured Reality uh, deck, which is this deck. All right, so that's the uh, card back for that. So if we do get any anomalies, then that's what we will be drawing from. Oh crap, where did I put that at? Uh, right here. <sighs> right, maybe I can move this a little bit closer. Cause, dang. All right, there we go. All right, cool, cool. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, I guess let's first let's take a look at our heroes. Um, I picked three randomly. I had originally like set all these out and picked like three for each one. They're all different. This time around, I basically just shuffled, grabbed the three that came off the top, and that's who I started with. Um, it's just easier that way. So uh, let's take a look at who we start with. Um, Norman Withers. Uh, so you can see his stats, 5 health, 7 horror, 3 in lore, 1 in influence, not very good in influence, good in observation, okay in strength, and amazing in will. What's his power? His power is in the stars. After you remove two or more doom from your space, you may suffer one horror to research one clue. That is amazing. Uh, that is awesome power. And his focus limit is, of course, 2. And uh, he does start out with... Uno Dollaro. As far as his um, cards, 
He's got two cards. Uh, Precious Memento is an item. Uh, after you gain a clue, remove two horror from this card. So that's a good way for him to get rid of horror. And then Find Gate. Uh, and I took these, the ones that were optional, I took it random on all these characters. So they have their required one and then a random one of the other two. Uh, Find Gate, it's a spell. We test lore. If you pass, you move to a space of your choice with one or more doom. So we can kind of jump around to the doom, which is pretty awesome. Um, and hopefully uh, get some clues and get rid of that horror and whatnot. So that is Mr. Norman Withers. Next we have Marie. We've seen her before in some of the other play, uh, playthroughs. Smoky Velvet is her power. She's an entertainer. Uh, once per round, after you perform an action, another investigator on any space may perform that same action. Normal action restrictions still apply. So in other words, um, I don't believe that this uh, counts against their three limit action. Uh, sorry, their two action limit. Uh, but they couldn't do, for example, on their turn have done, you know, an attack and a move, and then she she goes and, and they can't do another attack, as an example. So they still can only do one of each, but uh, they could potentially do three. So that is good, as long as it's different than something they've done. She starts with four money. Her cards are as follows. We've got Gren Grandemir's Knife, Magical Weapon, plus two attack, uh, plus two for casting, and her spell once per round while another investigator on any space is resolving a test. You may test lore minus one, which her lore is three. Take that out too quick, sorry. Uh, and uh, add your test results to the other investigator's test results. So we can help other people pass tests, which is pretty cool. Um, now it says, let's see, once per round, while another. It says while they're resolving a test. I'm going to assume that would mean like if they do it and they fail, then we could activate that. Uh, if I'm wrong, definitely let me know, but I feel like that's probably how that, that can work. Uh, and then we have Daniela Reyes. Uh, she's a mechanic. It's a ton of health. Pretty good stats, except for observation. 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 A uh, little low in horror, but she's really more combat oriented. Um, so she's got a focus limit of three. After you perform a gather resources action, this is her love for the job uh, ability. After you perform a gather resources action, you may focus one skill of your choice. Uh, so that's interesting. She could actually, if she needed to. So you could focus uh, two skills in a turn. So that's pretty cool. You say your stats are threes except for observation. So pretty good. Observation is just very low, so probably won't be using her a ton for researching and those sorts of things. Uh, what uh, items does she have? Well, let's see what she's got. She's got Gabrielle. So for normal move action, you may move up to three spaces. It may spend a dollar to move one additional space. So it's kind of like... Uh, Forget, there's another guy that's the police officer who's got a bike that does the same thing. Um, uh, wrench is an, another item she has. You get plus one to strength checks as part of an attack action. Uh, you get plus three instead if you have a free hand. So as long as she's not using something else in her other hand, then uh, she's going to get really good, really good... Um, Stats on that. So that's, that's where we're, we're at. at. And is there anything else? I think that covers everything on the board. Uh, we'll go over to the codices in just one second. And um, yeah, let's, let's go over the codices. All right. So what have we got down here? So let's grab these cards. And show these. So the first card we have is Anomalies. Uh, when a space has three different more neighborhood, has a total of five doom, place an anomaly. We've seen this a million times. Um, when that happens, um, once it's full, any additional doom, that's important because I think sometimes this gets missed and it's additional doom. So um, if you it says a space has three doom or a neighborhood has a total of five doom, uh, 
place an anomaly there, and then any doom that you would place after that goes straight to the scenario card. Uh, and the only way, of course, to remove the anomaly is to remove all the doom from said neighborhood. So that's the first one. So the next card is called Threshold. You heard numerous rumors about people and animals acting strangely in Arkham. Each new description is eerily similar to the last. Not an hour has passed since you were attacked by a flock of crazed pigeons and forced to take cover in Ma's boarding house. Now that the flock has moved on, it's time to take to the streets and figure out what's really happening in Arkham. The world's coming to an end. That's what's always happening in Arkham. Uh, so, when there is a total of two or more tokens on the scenario sheet, clues and or doom, flip the card. Now, that's interesting. That's the first one I've seen with. I don't think I've played this one yet. I must not have. I don't remember that. So, it's not just doom. It's clues or doom on the scenario sheet. Okay, cool. And 21, Lasting Scars. Um, the veil between the worlds grows thin. Something stirs beyond them. A presence lurking at the threshold of reality. Where it touches the world, it leaves a scar. A wound that reopens again and again. Left unchecked, those scars will tear the world apart. White markers are scars in the veil. I'll show you that on the board. Um, it's on this neighborhood right here that you can't see. It's covered by the card. After an anomaly appears, so after one of these guys shows up, uh, if there is not a scar in that neighborhood, place one scar in the neighborhood with the most doom in that neighborhood. So I don't know what that does. I'm assuming that the storyline... At some point, you'll be looking at where there's scars and even more horrendous, if it could be more horrendous, things happen uh, in that case. So, uh, where do we start? We start down here at Ma's boarding house. Now, uh, for ease of seeing, uh, since we're doing like a top-down method, one of these days I'll do like a side shot because I think that'd be cool, but it's easiest to do this for now based on my gear in my room. Uh, I've got my guys laying down and they have the stands on them. So what I'm going to do is we're going to assume if they're laying down and they have the stands, they're in normal. They're not delayed or anything. If they do become delayed, I'll simply remove their plastic stands and that will signify that they are uh, delayed. Okay. So that's how we're going to run that. Okay, cool. Uh, I think that's all all there is for now, I have my stuff off screen over here where I can get to it. Uh, I've got my dudes ready. I've got my stuff over there. Okay, cool. So I think we're good to go. So what do we want to do to begin with? Well, obviously we need clues. And honestly, I hate to even move from here. Um, I am a little bit worried about... The hulking thrall. So let's look at, I guess we should look at those. So the void torment, no, void touched, um, is a lurker. Wow. Each investigator suffers one horror. So they just like, really? Okay. Glad I read that because I totally missed that. So we need to get rid of that for sure. Uh, I think we've got a way to do that. I'm not going to show you the backs, obviously. Uh, then we have the hulking thrall. Hunter moved toward and engaged the highest observation. So the current highest observation is going to be Mr. Norman Withers. Um, and it does move too. Okay. Cool-ish. All right. Um, so, I suppose, let's start out with Miss Daniela. Remember... Because of her vehicle, she can move three, and pay a dollar to move one more. She has three dollars to begin with. So I think in order for us to just not be taking a ton of horror, let's start with her moving. She's going to go one, two, three. She's going to pay the dollar to go the fourth space, and boom, she's going to land in here with the void touched. That void touched will immediately engage her. So now let's look at what this is. 
So we have uh, two uh, health, no modifications. We do get a remnant if we destroy it. After you defeat this monster as part of an attack action, you gain one spell. Okay. Interesting. So that is now attached to Danielle Reyes. So that's action number one. Action number two is going to be to attack. Uh, so she has a strength. I should have got these out already. Of three. So there's one. Hold on. Ah. Alright, most of these tokens are easy to get out. It's just these goofy, goofy deals. Alright, so there's a strength of one, two, three. Alright, and then she's going to do an attack. So that would give her a wrench. Would give her one normally, but she has one-handed, so that's going to be three more. I'm just going to set these over here. So... Let's see what happens. Oh, okay. So that's one. Oh, jeez. Uh, one success is it? God, that sucks. Yeah. So one success uh, versus this. So yeah, that's just one damage. And we needed two. All right. Well. It's going to go back to her. It's going to be all of her done. And we're going to flip her token from that to that. And there you go. Okay. Uh, right. Hmm. Um... I think let's go with Marie next. I think she's going to attempt to uh, ward. This over here, so I've got it in case I need it. She's going to ward that doom in her space with three dice. Um, yeah, three dice. And, yeah, three dice. All right, here we go. And easily done, so that thing comes away. There we go. That's her one action. And then I think she's going to focus. Um, let's focus observation, just so that... If we can manage to get a clue, it'll make it a little bit easier to research. So that's her two actions. Boom. Uh, Norman, what is he going to do? Uh, wow. All right. Uh, I think he is going to, uh, let's see. I think he's going to focus. He's going to focus strength because... Uh, should he focus strength? Yeah, he'll focus strength for now. So that's one action. Uh, and the second action, he only has a dollar. So I'm going to say actually gather resources. I want to have a good chance to get these clues down here. So that's what we're going to go with. All right, cool. Monster phase. Uh, readied monsters activate. So... Up here, it's going to do two horror to Mrs. Reyes over five. Which sucks, but it's what happens. Hulking Thrall over here is going to move two spaces uh, towards the highest observation, which is these guys. So it's going to actually end up in the street. That's going to be a problem here in about two seconds. Uh, then we do the encounter phase. So, where the phase going? Uh, Reyes cannot go, because if you are engaged, you cannot do the, uh, encounter. So we'll flip that over. Marie is going to go, and she and Norman are both in Southside. So we'll pull the first card, and we have a clue card for her. Okay, 
Historical Society, Ma's Boarding House and South Church. They are in Ma's Boarding House. You may spend a dollar for you or an ally to recover three health. Okay, doesn't really help. The other guests are old, listening to voices only they can hear. Their bodies spasming and bulging, uh, bulging in unnatural ways, and their eyes turning milky white. You gain one clue from your neighborhood. All right, cool. So she got a clue. We don't have an ally or anybody that needs to be healed, so we don't have to worry about that. Awesome. So, this goes to the discard pile. Nice. Um, next is, uh, oh, let's flip her so we know she's done. Boom. Norman Withers. Same thing. Okay. And also, fortunately, another clue. You open the door to your room and find it seems to lead to the audience void. After closing it and reopening it again, all seems normal. You gain one clue from your neighborhood. Okay. Good deal, good deal. Um, then uh, you stagger downstairs and ask for dinner. You may spend one dollar for you or an ally to recover three health. All right, so again, nobody's got any damage, health damage anyway, so we're good there. And boom. <clears throat> awesome. So potentially, definitely uh, some research in their future. Okay, so. Yeah. As Cat Weasel says, if you have not seen his channel, check his channel out. It's amazing. He, Arkham Horror, Eldritch Horror, all those types of games, that is his jam. He does a phenomenal job of of playing them, a uh, phenomenal job of viewing them, of like, he's got everything for every one of them he plays, which is just insane, the number of cards that man has. Um, but it's it's awesome. It's a, it's a cool channel. You definitely need to check him out if you enjoy this type of game, uh, especially. He's got some other stuff too, but uh, that's what I, those are just really exceptional. All right, so enough said. So let's start with Daniela. We're going to draw these in order. I'm not looking. There's a Doom and a monster. Okay, so a Doom is going to go to the Black Cave. All right. Da -da 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 Black Cave. All right, so that's two in that neighborhood. All right, so that takes care of that. Let's put these over here once they're spent. And a monster which is going to be uh, an altered servant. This goes away. Uh, an altered servant uh, spawn at the unstable space. So currently the unstable space is the black cave. Uh, and his abilities, patrol, move in the unstable space, move toward unstable space, engage the most clues. Okay. So, so unstable, unstable space, space black cave. So he's gonna go right there. Interesting. Interesting. All right, cool. That is Daniela Reyes done. Marie Limbo. Oh no, Limbo. Okay. Headline and doom. All right. Let's see what awaits us in the headline deck. So this is the headline. All right, uh, let's see. Big City Burglars. For each item you have, you suffer one damage unless you discard that item. Okay. Huh. Uh, I mean, I, that's, that item's just too good. I think I'm gonna have to keep it. So, the only item she has is her knife. This is a spell, it's not an item. So, yep, that's what we're doing with that. It's on the bottom here. Cool. And Doom. Spreading Doom 2. Mystic Tonic University at the Observatory. Okay, Observatory. Mystic Tonic at the Observatory. Boom. Okay. And that goes. Mr. Withers, we've got blank. Okay, there are three of those. 
And okay, all blanks, which is great. It just means this next next time is gonna be real bad. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's get everybody ready. Back, boom, boom, and boom.